Today, I want to talk to you about the opportunity for biomedical technology to impact how we discover drugs. Currently, the average time to develop one drug is 12 years. So something that we discover in the lab today will not be a product for clinical use in patients until 2026. Think back 12 years. It was 2002. What did technology look like? <laughs> what did your phone look like? What did your computer look like? Could you use your phone and the internet at the same time? How did you take pictures, share data, connect with friends, listen to music? 12 years later, how we communicate and interact with the world has totally changed. Technology has transformed in the 12 years it takes to discover one drug. Think about this in terms of patients. Take cancer, for example. During this 15-minute talk, two Canadians will die from this disease. That's crazy, right? That number is so surprising. During the time it takes to develop one drug, approximately 900,000 people will die from the disease. Drug discovery is incredibly slow. And not only is it incredibly slow, it's incredibly expensive. The average cost to develop one drug is $6.6 .6 billion. So why is this process so slow and so expensive? Currently, the way we would develop drugs is in two stages preclinical testing in the lab, and clinical trials in groups of patients. So in the case of cancer drug development, we start by culturing cells on a plastic dish, adding our test compounds, and looking for compounds that are going to kill the cancer cells. So this process is cheap and fast. A select number of those compounds then move forward to do testing in test tumors in animal models. So this step is slow and expensive. An even smaller number of those compounds then move forward into groups of patients and extensive clinical trials. And this step is extremely slow and extremely expensive. But all these stages are really necessary to develop drugs that are safe and effective. But what makes the process overall so expensive and so slow is extremely high failure rates. So why can we not fail early? Why is our plastic dish, our experiments in our plastic dish, not giving us predictive information of how our drug is going to behave and how successful it's going to be in expensive, slow animal and human trials? And the reason for this is that cells are like people. They behave differently depending on who their neighbors are and the environment that they're in. So in the same way, you probably behave differently at work versus, say, in a nightclub. Cells behave differently depending on who their neighbors are and the environment that they're in. So if we look at the systems in a plastic dish, Cells are in two dimensions. They connect with their neighbors in two dimensions. And the environment is not variable. Oxygen levels are the same. Nutrient levels are the same around these cells. There's also very little genetic variation between the test cells. In the next stage, in animal models, these same test cells, uh, so there's no genetic variation again, are aggregated into three-dimensional structures and implanted in the mice. So the cells are now connecting with neighbors in all different dimensions, and there's lots of variation in the system. So there's variation in oxygen and nutrients, depending on how far those cells are from blood vessels. When we move into the patient tumor, we have the same 3D organization with cells reaching out in all directions, and we have the same variation in the environment in terms of oxygen and nutrient levels, depending on how far you are from a blood vessel, but now we also have genetic variation. So the system is even more complicated. So if cells care who their neighbors are and the environment they're in, 
is it really surprising that our 2D plastic dishes with no variation don't give us useful predictive information of how our drug is gonna behave in our 3D environment in the mouse and the person where there's lots of variation. So if our plates are not predictive, why do we use them? We use them because it's really easy to analyze cells in these simple plastic dishes in a 2D environment where there's no variation, which makes the experiments cheap and fast. Whereas in the 3D system, it's really hard to analyze what's going on, making the experiments very expensive and very slow because there's so much variation. So a few years ago, my lab started thinking about this problem. And we wondered, is there a way to add an extra step into this pipeline process? Is there a way to build a test tumor that has the 3D-ness and the environmental variation of the mouse and the person, but that's easy to analyze like cells in the plastic dish? Giving us the opportunity to fail early in this process before we spend the time and the money moving on to extensive clinical trials and animal experiments. So at that time, my lab worked in a field called modular tissue engineering. So we tried to assemble tissues from component parts. So you can kind of think of this like Lego blocks. So each block represents a different block of component cells and then we can then assemble these into a 3D structure with variation. So a tumor is just a kind of tissue. So we wondered, could we use this modular approach to build a test tumor? But what we realized is that we don't want to just build a test tumor. We want to build a test tumor that we can analyze easily like the cells in the plastic dish or like the component parts. So one way to achieve this is to take the components apart, okay? So the idea would be you have your tumor components, you assemble them, you add your drug, and then when you want to do your analysis, you take the components apart. But there's one problem. Cells care who their neighbors are and what environment they're in. And when we take apart the blocks, how do you know what came from where? How do you know which green block was next to a yellow block? How do you know which red block was at an edge position versus a center position? This is the solution that we came up with, inspired by the classic British cake, the Swiss roll. So to go from 2D into 3D, you use one component sheet and go into three dimensions simply by rolling it up. So how does this work? What we do is we take cells and uh, jello-like material and we infiltrate the cells into the scaffold material. And then uh, we gel this to form a dense piece of tumor tissue. So you can see the pink here is a dense sheet of tumor tissue in our scaffold material. To generate the 3D structure, we then simply roll up the dense tumor strip. So if we zoom in on the structure that we form, we're, by generating the Swiss roll, we generate layers whereby cells on the outer layers uh, have more access to oxygen and nutrients than cells on the inner layers. In the same way that in a tumor, cells close to a blood vessel have more access to oxygen and nutrients than cells far away from a blood vessel. We can then culture these rolled up tumors in our plastic dishes and expose them to the drugs. And when we want to do our analysis, we simply unroll the strip. And what is so powerful about this design is that it's very easy to know what came from where because each layer from the Swiss roll is located at a very specific location along the length of the strip. So it's really easy to know what came from where. So with this design, we really believe that we have something where we can build a test tumor that um, 
has the 3D environment and variation of uh, tumors in mice and people, but that's easy to analyze like cells in the plastic dish. So let me show you some pictures of how we do this. So here's our tube of cells. The cells are the small pellet at the bottom of this tube. These are our test tumor cells. We then infiltrate these into our scaffold material to generate our dense tissue sheet. Uh, so this is a very thin sheet uh, with the, the dense uh, tumor tissue in it. So this is a picture here of our scaffold before we add our cells. And then when we, we populate it with tumor cells, which you can see here in green and the scaffold in red, uh, we generate this dense sheet. We can then roll this up to form our tumor and then culture these rolled tumors in our plastic dish with our drugs or other therapies if we want to test those. We can then unroll the strip for analysis and analyze at specific locations corresponding to specific layers within the roll. So we can select a particular layer and then analyze the environment of the cells, who their neighbors are, and the behavior of the cells. So here, you're actually seeing levels of uh, oxygen in the system. And the reason this is important is because in the clinic, the level of oxygen in a person's tumor is predictive of how well they will respond to that drug and whether they are likely to survive or not. So being able to get this information easily is very important. So we believe that with this strategy, we can assemble 3D tumors with variation that may allow us to fail early in this process and not move on to extensive clinical trials and animal trials uh, if a drug is likely to fail. And going forward, we could imagine taking this a step further and adding even more variation into the system, adding in that genetic variation from the patient that really determines whether how, how different people behave to the same drug and how well they, they're, they're likely to respond. So one can imagine uh, a system whereby you could scan a particular person's tumor for its composition and its organization and send that to a computer where it generates a map of that composition and organization. You could then computationally unroll this and send it to a printer and then print a specific tumor strip with the exact composition and organization of that person's tumor, such that when you re-roll it, you have a recreation of that person's tumor in a dish. So with this strategy, we really believe that not only can we impact the current drug discovery process by giving us the opportunity to fail early by getting relevant information that's easy to analyze and access, but that we also offer the opportunity for an extra step, for a new stage of customization, whereby a clinician has the opportunity to really assess the effectiveness of different drug options or different combinations of drugs for his particular patient giving that person, the goal being to give that person the best possible chance to survive. Drug discovery is incredibly slow and incredibly expensive. But perhaps in the next 12 years, with technology, we can change that. Thank you. <laughs>